back from uh, sort of bombarded everybody quite a bit of, of information there over lunchtime. And I suppose of what the, the, the core of what I'm actually trying to say today is that we all know what makes the police good in terms of the organisation, in terms of policing of the community and the service orientation. We know that. We know that good policing is uh, absolutely necessary. But we need to start with what, first of all, we can control, and secondly, along with what we don't know. And this is in view of the fact that what we do know about policing, in view of the evidence I've presented today, is of course not the full picture. And indeed we've got issues, legacy, um, segregation, counter-terrorism, deprivation, uh, politics, all those things, uh, but to name a few, are factors which the PSNI cannot, of course, fully control, but which impact in them confidence in their organisation. Also distributions of confidence um, in police across the country, socio-demographic variables of those who participate in surveys, the dynam dynamics of fear, of crime and disorder, of neighbourhood satisfaction levels and conditions influencing perceptions of policing across the country are issues that we do not know with any degree of accuracy yet. So really I think within this conundrum of knowing what we do and knowing uh, what we don't, um, we do have two options. Firstly, I think we can invest in starting to, to measure and map um, and understand such factors as part of a much more, what we could say, a full appreciation of what community confidence actually looks like, the useful levels in Northern Ireland. And undoubtedly, this would be, uh, in the current climate, financially, this would probably be a, a costly exercise. But arguably, continuing um, with current measures may be higher, the cost may be higher in the long run for the delivery of policing and relationships with communities where 79% confidence is just patently not true in, in many communities, especially uh, urban, working class, loyalist and public communities. But that's one option. Our second, um, I suppose slightly more radical option, would actually be moving in the other direction entirely and dispense with confidence measures in the PSNI altogether. And on the face value, this might actually seem quite you know, heretical, not to mention uh, running against the grain of, of legislative responsibility um, of the policing board. But when you actually break it down, there are quite a number of logical arguments for such an approach. Because when we create, very simply, when we create a label for an activity such as confidence, the culture out of which policing has come over the past decade automatically creates a set of measures and a set of, uh, and a set of bureaucracy for this label. And as we've seen, those measures don't to date work particularly well. So if we start to measure confidence as the outworking of policing, not just police work, encapsulated through community perceptions of fear, fear of crime, neighbourhood satisfaction and crime and disorder um, issues down to meaningful levels then we actually start to have the basis for something. Because significantly, this sort of thinking sits well with the DOJ's new community safety strategy, with the, the DOJ's key performance indicator, number five, on levels in police engagement with local communities and levels of confidence in policing, as, as alluded to in the draft programme for government. And also sits well with the approach uh, to confidence in uh, the DOJ's uh, statistical reports on confidence in policing, which are themselves drawn from the Northern Ireland Crime Survey, which itself is based on 16 socio-demographic variables. Because it's these sorts of measurements which actually give us a much more rounded, accurate picture of confidence in policing, not just the police. And if we take a, you know, the, the, the Northern Ireland Crime Survey as an example, and specifically data related to the DOJ's key performance indicator number five, um, described as engagement. I'll just go into this in a little detail. And they define engagement as the extent to which people feel local police and other agencies, first of all, seek people's views about antisocial behaviour and crime that matters uh, at a local level. And secondly, engagement is defined as the extent to which pe local people believe that the police and other agencies are actually dealing with antisocial behaviour and crime issues that matter in the area rather than looking at perceptions of the PSNI per se. And here we can see very significant, this is where we start to see very significant variations in the data. Because if we look at simply confidence in the police and policing, even the Northern Ireland Crime Survey 
sits at 78%, roughly reflecting what the Northern Ireland uh, Policing Board uh, surveys indicate. But when you start to look at the second of those, confidence and engagement um, with, with police and policing, and remember engagement is defined as the ability to deal with antisocial behaviour and crime issues at the local level, that level of confidence drops down almost half to 38%. Because at this point, as I said, we have to remember, in terms of how um, engagement is actually defined, relates much more closely to the perceptions of the conditions in which people live and how that is being dealt with by the PSNI and um, other agencies, which is clearly a much more useful measure than random individualised perceptions for, from across the country. And I think, uh, suppose furthermore, it's only the wider policing or you know, wider community safety family together who can directly influence community factors at a local level, not the police alone. But it's something we need to plan for, I think, um, based on, on the, the evidence that we have in front of us today. Uh, because if we continue to see confidence only as, a, as an individual community metric, it actually works, it actively works against the very processes which underpins it in the first place. Primarily because there's too much emphasis solely on, on PSNI. So in this regard, and I suppose just to try and try and um, sum up and finish, because I haven't run over too long either. Um, as a chief, chief constable back in 2010 at the North South Irish Criminology Conference, he said very specifically the share price of PSNI was confidence. Mm -hmm. And if this is the case, and in view of some of the evidence that I've highlighted today, then the policing institutions and policymakers, I think they need to uh, think about uh, broadening the investment in those shares a little more. Because we are at a crossroads uh, with regard to community confidence in the country for a variety of reasons. Not least because we don't accur accurately know what it is, either privately within the policing institutions or publicly in, 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 in the eyes of, of the community. But if we can see confidence as a process in view of all these factors we've looked at, and not this isolated metric, then we have the, the opportunity to take policing forward in the 2020 on the right foot. Not just because we'll suddenly, suppose, be measuring confidence correctly in any sort of technical sense, which is, of course, important so we understand what's happening, but because it's important to getting policing right for the people it's meant to serve, not just in terms of PSNI, but in terms, as said, of the wider policing family. And that is the important issue, whichever way you actually look at it. Thank you. Okay, well, you took me through a few challenges there. Um, and uh, I think you're, you're happy to take some Absolutely, yes, I'll try my best. So, I'm going to watch the.